Better than a thousand days of diligent study is one day with a great teacher. Your heart is slightly bigger than the average human heart, but that's because you're a teacher. Teachers can change lives with just the right mix of chalk and challenges. Teaching is the greatest act of optimism. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. Students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. It is not what is poured into a student that counts, but what is planted. Teachers have three loves, love of learning, love of learners, and the love of bringing the first two loves together. The art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery. Education doesn't just make us smarter, it makes us whole. Teaching kids to count is fine, but teaching them what counts is best. I am indebted to my father for living, but to my teacher for living well. A teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops. I like a teacher who gives you something to take home to think about besides homework. I have learned silence from the talkative, toleration from the intolerant, and kindness from the unkind. Yet, strange, I am ungrateful to those teachers. A good teacher can inspire hope, ignite the imagination, and instill a love of learning. A teacher who is attempting to teach without inspiring the pupil with a desire to learn is hammering on cold iron. Good teachers know how to bring out the best in students. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Change is the end result of all true learning. Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. The roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Live as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. The learning process continues until the day you die. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. Develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Education is not preparation for life. Education is life itself. They know enough who know how to learn. Education is the ability to listen to almost anything without losing your temper or your self-confidence. They cannot stop me. I will get my education if it is in the home, school, or any place. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. He who opens a school door closes a prison. Education is the ability to meet life situations. Learning starts with failure. The first failure is the beginning of education. Intelligence plus character that is the goal of true education. Education consists mainly of what we have unlearned. If you have to put someone on a pedestal, put teachers. They are society's heroes. The duties of a teacher are neither few mind and give energy to the character. The best teachers are those who show you where to look, but don't tell you what to see. 
Better than a thousand days of diligent study is one day with a great teacher. Your heart is slightly bigger than the average human heart, but that's because you're a teacher. Teachers can change lives with just the right mix of chalk and challenges. Teaching is the greatest act of optimism. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. Students don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. It is not what is poured into a student that can. Good evening, everybody. Could you please confirm me from Audible? Thank you, Cherian. Good evening once again. Thank you all for registering and attending this 7th day national level online faculty development program on outcome based education and essential AI tools for teachers. This is organized by the internal quality assurance IQAC and the Department of Computer Science of St. Albert's College Autonomous and Auckland in association with the Kerala State Higher Education Council, the KCGC. We would like to welcome today's resource persons, Dr. Sunil Job K. A who is the adjunct faculty, Marine College, Kutukana Autonomous, and also Dr. Mendes Jacob, who is the director, PG Department of Computer Applications of Marine College. And we would like to welcome all the FTP participants of today. Now, about this FTP, this is a seven day pro was a seven day program with live sessions from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, this is the last day of our FTP. Now, E for the access of LMS and the processing of certificate is rupees 500. All the participants who have pay, made the payment, processing fee payment will receive the LMS access. The video recordings for all the days and the provision to download your FTP completion certificate. The procedure for receiving the certificate, I will inform you towards the end of this FTP session. If any of you are yet to make the payment, you can make the payment payment of rupees 500 to the account details I'll put in the chat shortly. If you are unable to attend any of the live sessions, they will be available in the LMS. We have shared the LMS access details through email to those who have shared the payment proof in WhatsApp till yesterday. Those who have shared the payment proof in WhatsApp today will receive the LMS access later in the day or by tomorrow. If you have any trouble in attending the WebEx online session, we have also the YouTube live session that is streaming uh, simultaneously. I will put the link of that in the chat now. You can access that as well if you have difficulty in accessing the WebEx live session. My name is Sujin Jacob George. I'm working as Global Relations Manager with IPSR Solutions Limited, and I will be the event moderator. Now, about today's session, we will first have the session on this topic of applications of chat CPT and AI tools in teaching, learning, and assessment. This is going to be delivered by Dr. Sunil Job K.A., who is the adjunct faculty, Marine College, Kotekana. Now, a short description about Dr. Sunil Job K.A. Uh, Dr. Sunil Job is actually an active blogger in cutting edge technologies in IT, education, and data science. Dr. Job has also published a few articles in national journals and authored a few academic books and reference, in, reference manual in mathematics. He has served as a resource person for a number of faculty development programs in outcome-based education, data science, e-learning, etc. Currently, he is serving as the adjunct professor, Marine College Kotikaranam Autonomous, and chief of academics, IPSR Solutions Limited. Over to you, sir. So, <clears throat> so thank you, Sajin, for the introduction. And probably, uh, I, I presume that uh, the participants uh, uh, who were there in the first day uh, is still here. Um, and uh, probably they'll be knowing me the first two days we were together. We have been exploring something about uh, Bloom's taxonomy and also about uh, outcome-based education, actually that is the uh, core uh, theme of our uh, 
the Shakali Development Program. And we are very happy that uh, uh, we have uh, successfully scaled all these seven days. And now we are in the last uh, concluding lap or the concluding day of the long journey of seven days, Shakali Development Program. And I presume that uh, you had a very beautiful experiences uh, about uh, this uh, outcome-based education, about the conceptual framework, uh, and also uh, about the, some uh, automated system that could uh, help you uh, in making this uh, outcome-based education uh, scenario a reality, as well as uh, that could be done in ease. And also, you had a very uh, beautiful section on uh, the curriculum framework uh, according to the new education policy 2020. Uh, so, uh, and also the one most important uh, theme in this uh, faculty development program is uh, how to integrate uh, chat GPT uh, to the different activities of the teacher to easy or to lessen our uh, uh, tedious task. So, uh, Suresh Nambudri definitely would have taken you through uh, the prompt engineering, uh, probably that is something very important for you uh, for customizing uh, the prompt. And uh, so the customization of the prompt emphasizes that uh, it will give you what you are looking for. So uh, today uh, in this last section, I will be there uh, for uh, the first half of this uh, section. And uh, it will be taken up by uh, Dr. Mendes after my section. So in this section, what I am going to uh, bring to your uh, notice is that how to uh, integrate chat gpt probably now you are an expert in chat gpt because your personal experience as well as uh, some uh, important tips which has been given by suresh nambudri has uh, definitely uh, elevated your uh, experiences uh, in chat gpt usage so what uh, uh, i am going to try is to uh, customize the chat gpt into the outcome based uh, education framework that is the functional framework of the outcome-based education and how we can streamline the possibilities of uh, chat gpt into this outcome-based uh, education probably you uh, we know that now nowadays uh, the role of the teacher uh, or the the professors are very hectic in the sense uh, they have to interact with the students they have to interact uh, uh, with the, the different uh, uh, departments they have to uh, make a lot of uh, other uh, periodical uh, tasks uh, in promoting researches as well as uh, uh, to uh, cater to the uh, requirement of uh, NAC accreditations, uh, like 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 a number of things has to be there. So probably I have he seen, uh, heard that teacher saying that there is no time even to take the breath because uh, that much of task is there. So definitely when you bring uh, ChatGPT uh, closer to your activities, Definitely, your workload will uh, get reduced to about 10, uh, about about 80 to uh, up to 80 percent. That is that much of uh, uh, task or that much of activities uh, could be made done through this uh, uh, AI tools. And uh, because since uh, I have been working with this uh, AI tools, uh, uh, especially in um, this data science, uh, uh, that is this uh, machine learning. Uh, as well as uh, deep learning. Actually, the chatbot that you have been mastering all these days is been built by a deep learning architecture. Uh, that is uh, a natural uh, language understanding. So that uh, so uh, that is how uh, this uh, uh, chat GPT, the chatbot, has been uh, developed. Uh, so uh, uh, now, uh, obviously, I am sure that uh, you have a lot of experiences on usage of chat GPT or any other AI tools. So before using that AI tool, one thing that you have to take into concern is that AI tool will not come over you. Now as such, you are the masters. The thing is that uh, yeah, no model is 100% accurate because when we, uh, obviously those who have been working with uh, data sciences will know that when we are developing a model, we will be trying to, uh, we will be trying to uh, estimate the accuracy of that model. And uh, obviously the, all the model uh, now as such is not 100% uh, accurate. It, it does not come up to that level of maturity. It is only up to 70% uh, plus. Only, only that much of accuracy is there uh, in any AI tools. That is, the 30% uh, can be, uh, uh, th there can be some folly or errors that can uh, pop in into this uh, uh, whatever thing that uh, you are trying to uh, interact with the chatbot and get uh, something from the chatbot. 
and obviously uh, now i think uh, it will be clear that the difference between a google search and and this uh, uh, chat gpt is that the google search is text search that is uh, you will be uh, inputting some keywords and it will be giving you a list of uh, uh, websites and content that where you have to read uh, and uh, get the things uh, there but uh, in chat gpt uh, the difference is that you can interact uh, as if you are talking to a friend uh, it will be giving you the solutions that is the uh, most important differences and what i am trying to because all these days you are working with chat gpt i'm not going to uh, uh, say anything about chat gpt one thing i want to put into, into your mind is that uh, the thing that uh, chat gpt recommend you it gives you uh, as a recommendations in the form of text because it is chatbot it will give you only the text format it won't give you any uh, uh, visual diagrams or anything like that so uh, whatever it give you will not be 100% accurate it will be only 70% so to accept it or not it is your expertise so when we start using chat gpt don't think that there is no need for you to master the thing that you are handling because you have to the master because uh, you, it is you who have to uh, evaluate or validate whether uh, what the chat gpt has given you could be accommodated into your workspace so that uh, validation as well as uh, uh, the, that uh, thing is very important when we are using an AI tools. So uh, uh, maybe in future that uh, the accuracy level will go up and it, it will come to a maturation where that uh, this AI tool will be 100% accurate. In that instance, obviously, there is no need for you to make a suggestion because whatever it say will be 100% perfect. But now as such, it is not 100% perfect. It is only having an accuracy rate of about between 70 to 80. So uh, it is you, you have to decide. So you are the master still. Uh, so don't uh, become uh, a slave to what uh, the chat GPT says. Uh, you are the masters. You have to uh, th uh, evaluate what uh, chat GPT uh, say and uh, uh, you can accommodate it into your workspace. So this is something which uh, in every section when I interact with a group, I, I used to, uh, because I, I am working with uh, uh, this uh, architectural uh, segment of these uh, uh, chatbots as well as uh, uh, AI tools. So uh, this should be uh, uh, taken into consideration while you're working with uh, any of the AI tools. Uh, so uh, I, I'm not, uh, we'll directly go. I have got very few slides uh, uh, to share with you. Uh, so our focus is that how we can use the possibility of uh, uh, chat GPT uh, uh, to a, uh, that is um, an outcome based education framework. framework. So let me share uh, the um, slides that I am having with you, uh, with me, uh, and obviously uh, because we have the weather is not at all uh, appreciable. That of uh, thunder uh, is there, and uh, a lot of in internet connectivity there is issues. So I, I'm just keeping my video close and share the screen. Okay, uh, Sijin, uh, as usual, I have two things to ask whether the sound is okay as well as uh, the screen is yeah, visible. Yeah, sound is okay and your uh, screen is visible. No uh, okay, the, uh, so that yeah, is, uh, we, are, we can take, uh, go with the today's content. Uh, so uh, let me put it into uh, the presentation mode. Uh, okay, so this is what we are going to uh, discuss for today. That is chat GPT enabled outcome-based education framework and solutions. So uh, a small um, awareness into in what all context that you uh, you could able to streamline the possibilities of uh, this chat GPT in order to make our workload less. That is what we are going to do for today. So you'll be wondering what this is all about. This is really the framework of uh, the outcome-based education. You can just uh, look at this uh, picture and uh, uh, could you get what is given here? Actually, when we uh, when we are uh, that is uh, implementing outcome based education to our in our college, uh, it will progress in three phases. Uh, as I've just given it in the first introductory classes, the first phase is this this rectangle. This is the formulation phase. This is the formulation phase. 
in the formulation phase i've just uh, shown you uh, the first day, oh, first not first the second day about that uh, building block of outcome based education or the architecture of outcome based education where uh, uh, you have seen a a house like uh, structure where the top vision and mission below vision and mission the program educational objectives is there uh, and below the program educational objectives we will be uh, identifying what all competencies that the students uh, should acquire when they leave the program and by the end of the program that should be met that is that is peos and peos and these peos and peos are met by different courses that we give as a part of the program so this is what you have to formulate this will happen at the formulation stage okay so uh, we will be identifying all these phases separately and check out in what all instances where we can uh, use the possibility of the chat gpt the second phase is this one uh, don't think that this is small this is the real uh, lifeblood of outcome based education that is how you are interacting with the students in an outcome based educational format that is how you teach how you give assignments how you interact with the students what are methodology that you will try to uh, bring into your classes what are, what is what is the pedagogical approach that you are going to take uh, in order to render your curriculum so all these things uh, is the uh, phase where you are interacting with the students that is a uh, that is a uh, space where there is life you are interacting with the students so uh, how chat gpt will help you to interact with the students probably uh, the classes by Suresh Nambudri has uh, uh, given a lot of use cases where uh, ChatGPT could uh, help you in interacting with the students. So obviously, how uh, ChatGPT can help you to interact with the students in an outcome-based educational framework or in an outcome-based educational format. So interacting with the students in an outcome-based educational format means what is the priority in that interaction and how ChatGPT could help you uh, to, uh, because uh, the most positive part of the chat gpt is that uh, it will bring to your notice something that you have never even thought about so uh, so a lot of uh, innovations uh, you can integrate into your workspaces and uh, the caution is there whether that innovation is appropriate to the situation that you have to design obviously so this is the second phase uh, that is uh, where you're interacting with the students and this is the final phase so pre-active interactive and post-active and what is the post-active phase after teaching what we do we will take the assessments whether the students have um, made that much of progress according to our outcomes so that is the assessment so these are the three phases formulation phase uh, the teaching uh, learning phase and uh, the assessment phase where you um, uh, make some summative assessments uh, make some summative assessments uh, where uh, to check out whether the students to what level the CO is attained, what level the PO is attained. So all these things will come at the assessment phase. And uh, obviously you can see that the cycle is coming back. So what does it emphasize? means that uh, outcome is education is not a static topology. It is a dynamic one. Every time it uh, the, the education system or the environment have to evolve Evolve in the sense it have to evolve uh, to what uh, to a higher level of uh, uh, quality. The quality enhancement is uh, most important. That is whether uh, the education institution is been going uh, rightly uh, to streamline the students in the way the society and nation demands, and whether to make them competent to make uh, uh, any challenges of their life and career. So that is what I, outcome based education focuses. And every time, every time when the student pass out, the outcome based education make assessments on how they are progressing in the social uh, metrics, and that will come as a feedback for uh, improvisation of the uh, uh, of the uh, further activities. So this will go as a cycle. So uh, planning, uh, teaching, evaluating, and then uh, giving feedback, and on the basis of feedback, replanning and uh, so this cycle will go uh, like this so at every uh, cyclic uh, 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 this uh, revolution uh, of the quality of the institution and the quality of the activities that has been happening at that institution will go up so we will see how chat gpt is i am just going to cut this one cut this one and uh, you can see that i have cut that first one and see in this process of in this process where do we how do we apply chat gpt obviously vision and mission 
there is no need for chat gpt you will be setting it according to uh, the the uh, college uh, uh, or the institutional uh, vision and mission cannot uh, will be developed definitely that will be there and uh, obviously the program educational objectives uh, should be uh, you should not ask chat gpt about because there will be uh, locally uh, differences will be there uh, so uh, you you should get uh, feedbacks from the stakeholders uh, and on the basis of vision and mission you can formulate uh, a program educational objective the goals the goals of the system and from there uh, you have to uh, filter out filter out uh, uh, what is graduate attribute i told that both graduate attribute and program outcomes are same okay graduate attribute is the uh, is the nutshell i will say communication skill that is a graduate attribute uh, op, uh, or uh, um, this uh, leadership quality uh, or ethics environmental sustainability all these are a bunch of competencies isn't it so uh, obviously in the first day i have just uh, made it clear uh, how all these competencies has to be sorted out so after sorting out these competencies it is the duty of the in, of the college to write that competency in the form of an outcome statement okay so competency communication skill is a competency what does communication skill mean so if the student attain the communication skill what the students will be able to perform you have to list it in the form of a statement so the graduate attribute will be written in the form of an outcome statement for that you can use chat gpt for instance this is the prompt obviously now we will be ex uh, experts in prompt prompt is nothing but uh, the dialogue that you uh, pass to the chat gpt to getting the responses the chat gpt is just like a person that is uh, uh, the the uh, bigger thing is that if you are working with uh, a program uh, the syntax is very important if you don't put as a comma or if there is a uh, syntax error uh, if you are not giving a proper alignment or if you are not uh, if it is c program if you are not putting uh, curly brackets it won't read but this is uh, uh, you are communicating it uh, in your own language, there is uh, no language bar is there. Only thing is that uh, you should uh, first uh, ask the chat GPT to ignore the previous prompts and what the chat GPT, uh, what role that the chat GPT, in what role the chat GPT uh, should interact with you and what is the theme of that interaction and any specifications if you want to give, uh, you can give specifications. So that will be the structure of a prompt. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, yeah, this uh, um, Suresh Tamudri has given you a very detailed sections. So this is the prompt that I'm going to give. Ignore all the previous prompts because we know that uh, every time uh, you put some question, there is no need to uh, initialize uh, what you are now. Once you say that now you are acting as an expert in formulation OB, uh, the, he will take it unless and otherwise you will ask them to rethink in a different role. So uh, the next thing, uh, every time there is no need to uh, say that you are an expert, you are an expert. You will be uh, just like uh, conversing with a person. So uh, ignore the previous prompts, acts as an expert uh, in formulation of OB uh, curriculum uh, and write the graduate attribute uh, communication skill into a single program outcome statement for graduation level for graduation level so what i've tried uh, asking chat gpt uh, is chat gpt please uh, help me to uh, don't say please uh, uh, that is you are asking chat gpt uh, to write uh, that uh, graduate attribute uh, communication skill as a uh, outcome statement outcome statement means what students will be capable of doing so let me check it out uh, and uh, i have a concern that uh, uh, priorly this uh, uh chat gpt is uh was uh, down there is uh, some issues let me check whether it is working if it is working we will be uh, showing it i will run and show it otherwise i will just uh, uh, give you all the prompts and you can do it yourself okay he is a very active man okay so why so what chat gpt says it is suggestions if you are not satisfied with the suggestions you can regenerate it you can regenerate it in any number of times and you can take what it is recommendations don't take it exactly what it says you can uh, customize it and take what you need so what chat gpt says what do you mean by communication skill what is it at the uh, at the uh, culmination of the uh, the program graduate the, will demonstrate advanced proficiency in communication uh, isn't it uh, uh, adaptly employing a diverse range of verbal written and visual uh, media to articulate complex ideas 
and information. So this is what the students are able to do. It has been very beautifully defining what communication skill, what the students are will be. Able. They will exhibit the ability to tailor the communication style to diverse audience uh, efficiently. Uh, elaborate within interdisciplinary teams and so it has given a very beautiful descriptions what communication skill really means so your task is that you can tailor it and make it compatible according to your convenience so that is what so a single word communication skill the chat gpt has converted it into a program outcome statement i have made it uh, from that what chat gpt has given i have uh, tailored it and put it in this way demonstrate proficient communication skill by eff effectively tra uh, transmitting and interpreting ideas informations and arguments through clear and coherent verbal and written communication fostering meaningful interactions with diverse audience and facilitating knowledge exchange isn't it? Uh, in uh, you can also uh, specify the context also uh, in uh, life and uh, uh, this uh, uh, workspace etc. Like that. So this is how you can use ChatGPT for formulation of program outcome. So uh, at this level, for writing program outcome, you can ask ChatGPT to help you to write program outcome. So uh, for teachers, definitely uh, our matter of concern is uh, how to write a course outcome because probably uh, we know that the te teachers are finding it difficult uh, sometimes uh, they have a lot some confusions on how to write a course outcome obviously we know that course outcome is that what students are capable of doing on completing of the course so now uh, according to the present scenario what we have is that we already have the curriculum with us and normally the we are doing the reverse process actually uh, it should come from top to down now, from the outcome only the curriculum should be developed but now we are already doing uh, the curriculum is already there with it so what we are doing is that we are porting our traditional uh, teaching learning environment into an outcome based format for that we will be uh, by looking at that uh, this curriculum curriculum in the sense syllabus we should be able to identify what is the outcome connected to the syllabus so obviously uh, in my sections i have told you you have to ask the question to yourself is it it what the students are capable of doing uh, when they learn these uh, um, syllabus so uh, you'll be getting an answer put it into the form of a verbal statement so instead of asking yourself you can ask that GPT priorly isn't it so i'm handling one section at uh, uh, marine college uh, this uh, operational research uh, so uh, the content uh, of module one operation research i have just uh, okay uh, the operation research what is operation research uh, linear programming pro pro uh, linear uh, programming problem uh, uh, this is a linear uh, pro programming problem formulation of models uh, solutions etc so this is the nutshell of uh, the content in uh, module one so uh, if you are preparing uh, ceo with respect to the module you can just uh, showcase the content into the chat gpt and ask the chat gpt you, you uh, so I, I i will just uh, put this uh, into this uh, uh, copy because uh, I am in the presentation mode so it is no it is difficult for me to copy presentation so I have uh, there is small error linear programming problem programming program uh, problem okay uh, so I'm just going to ask uh, chat GPT about this Okay, uh, I asked the chat GPT to give me uh, uh, two outcomes. So, okay, uh, so chat GPT uh, has given you formulate precise structured models on the real uh, problem, applying critical uh, analysis, etc., 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 and also the implementing diverse uh, uh, technique demo. If you want to re re regenerate it, you can, okay, uh, upon completion of the, uh, you can regenerate it. So by the end of the courses, uh, what the students will demonstrate proficiency in employing optimization technique to oh this seems to be a little more better isn't it so first thing i am not satisfied so i asked uh, chat gpt to regenerate it again if you are not satisfied you can regenerate it any number of times so what is it uh, where is that uh, bloom's verb here uh, demonstrate proficiency in employing optimization technique to diverse solutions for uh, linear programming model showcasing the ability to interpret so you can uh, uh, edit this and uh, uh, write a course outcome 
So what I you said, use linear programming techniques to formulate mathematical uh, model for real optimization problem. Exactly same as what we have seen. Or evaluate and access the effectiveness of various. Uh, so these are the two solutions that we could get. So what we want to communicate is that uh, uh, don't take 100% what ChatGPT says. You can make it compatible to your uh, requirement. So it will be giving you a 70% or 80% uh, suggestions and 30% you, you can edit it and make it uh, complete uh, according to your requirement. So this is what, uh, because uh, ChatGPT is a, um, uh, a tool where the answer has been given from the product of its learning. So once you interact, the next time it may not be saying exactly the same. Uh, there will be some differences. So this is what uh, one time when I communicated use. Use is uh, an application level uh, verb. Uh, linear programming techniques to formulate mathematical model for real optimization problems. So this is what one suggestion that I've got. Then evaluate and access the effectiveness of various solutions. Evaluate higher, higher uh, order. Uh, evaluate. Uh, you uh, and access uh, or evaluate the effectiveness. Don't, there is no need to write access. Effectiveness of various uh, uh, solution methods uh, and so uh, that is what uh, uh, ChatGPT has recommended. So you are able to uh, write the outcomes if you are giving ChatGPT the content related to the particular topic. So if you are having uh, five uh, modules, you can uh, put these modules in this inverted co comma, uh, write appropriate course outcome for the course operation research. Uh, if you are using some of the physics, you can put physics at the MCA level where the following topics uh, are included in the module, in the module one. Uh, if there is second module, you can took, uh, uh, to, uh, write module two and whatever suggestions that you, and I have asked uh, uh, ChatGPT, don't, you should not include more than two course outcomes. So maximum two course outcomes will be uh, given. So you can select any one or you can combine or all these things are left to your freedom. So that is how uh, you are able to write course outcomes uh, by means of ChatGPT. So uh, yeah, so we, uh, we found that in formulation phases, you can apply ChatGPT to um, identify uh, or uh, you can just uh, give that uh, what you could say, uh, the program educational uh, objectives. And you can ask ChatGPT to identify uh, what are the different uh, uh, graduate attributes uh, essential for that uh, successful accomplishment of program educational objectives. There also, it will be suggesting graduate attribute. Then you can give that graduate attribute and you can, with the help of ChatGPT, you can write it in the form of a program outcome. And uh, again, uh, if you want to write course outcome, you can give the course content to the chat GPT and ask the chat GPT to uh, give you uh, the uh, course outcomes. You can uh, generate it any number of times and you can uh, take the best uh, uh, you feel compatible for your uh, uh, course that you are uh, uh, delivering. So, so that is how you can integrate chat GPT. So the uh, prompt is in the sense is that uh, it is uh, when we say engineering, you will think that, oh, it is something to do uh, uh, some technical thing, no technical thing. Uh, the thing is that you first ask chat GPT to uh, act as a what? What role the chat GPT should, should take? And then what is the content uh, that you need from chat GPT? And if there is any specific uh, specifications, you can give it. Uh, don't be uh, too much uh, elaborate, uh, put it in one statement or uh, don't give more than two. Uh, uh, in the previous prompt, I've asked that don't give more than two. So it will give you according to your requirements. So you can uh, uh, suggest the requirements, run the prompt. You, you, you can make it that much big, up to 2,000 words uh, can be included in writing uh, a prompt. So uh, no worry. Uh, you can uh, give a lot of suggestions to the chat GPT to give you exactly what you are looking for. Okay, so that is how you can make a use of chat GPT. So, come, so we have uh, coming to the second level. At the second level, how to uh, integrate the possibility of uh, chat GPT in a teaching learning space? Obviously, uh, I, I, I presume that uh, in Suresh Nambudari's uh, section, uh, a lot of use cases he have uh, included. Uh, uh, how chat GPT will be helping a prospective teacher uh, in making his uh, teaching learning activity a very smart one. 
definitely. Uh, so uh, I am just uh, trying to keep it uh, uh, customized to an outcome-based educational format. Only thing. So in a uh, teaching learning environment, the soul of teaching learning environment in an OB framework is to constructively align. I repeat, constructively align all activities to the respective outcome. So that is how we have to uh, interact with the students. So when we interact, we could find that there are three, three. Uh, 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 it is a tripolar process. Because uh, when we are interacting with the students, definitely in every activity uh, that we perform, we have to prefix an outcome first. That is intended learning outcome. If you're going to take a topic, there should be an intended learning outcome. If you're going to give an, uh, uh, an assignment, there should be an intended learning outcome that should evolve from that particular assignment. So everything that you do should be centered around outcome based. That is why we say outcome based education. So in an outcome based education, everything should revolve around some outcomes. So the entire course should be should revolve around course outcome. The entire program should revolve around program outcome. Suppose if you are going to teach a class, you have to disintegrate the uh, you have to uh, fragment uh, the course outcome into intended learning outcome. Suppose if you are going to teach a topic, what is the outcome that uh, the you, you should uh, bring about in the students after completing that topic? That is intended learning outcome. And once the intended learning outcome is fixed, then what is your role? What learning uh, experiences, what teaching learning activity that you could give to the students to make the students uh, uh, attain that outcome. That is, you can see here, what teaching learning activity uh, you should uh, uh, do in order to attain that particular intended learning outcome. That is what uh, you have to do. And uh, together with the teaching learning uh, activity, formative evaluation should go side by side. The formative evaluation is uh, something, it is just like steering. It is just like steering a car. That is uh, the, the importance of the st steering is that uh, we want to steer the car to our destination. So the formative evaluation is just like steering the students to the outcome-based education, isn't it? So uh, you are uh, giving some activity and you have to check whether uh, the students are progressing to the outcome. Uh, if it is not, again, change that activity, uh, check it out, check it out, check it out, so that you can steer the students to that activity. So this is a, so this process is constructive alignment. This should be taken into consideration while you are interacting with the students in any pedagogical framework. So here, what is, uh, what is the role of uh, this outcome-based education? What is the role of ChatGPT? Uh, so to identify two uh, teaching methods appropriate for the actualization of that outcome. So I asked ChatGPT that uh, I have given few topics uh, in uh, operational research, uh, and I asked ChatGPT to frame uh, uh, course outcomes. So it has given a few course outcomes, and I have taken one one course outcome. And one course outcome that I have taken is that use linear programming technique to formulate mathematical models for real world optimization problems. So this is one. Uh, recommendation. That is one outcome that ChatGPT has suggested. So in order to attain that outcome, what teaching learning activity that I have to give? Isn't it? So this is the outcome that I have to attain. So in order to outcome uh, that at, uh, attain that outcome, what teaching learning activity that I have to adopt for attaining this outcome? You can ask ChatGPT. So obviously, uh, we uh, uh, in the traditional approach, we directly will go with some lectures or discussions, etc. If you want some different uh, approach, and if you are going uh, like this, uh, this could be included into this uh, uh, NAC accreditation process where what all innovative techniques that you are uh, bringing into teaching learning environment or researches, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, you will be getting some smart uh, methodologies and pedagogical approaches through uh, chat GPT suggestions so that your uh, teaching learning environment will be always very fresh. Okay, so uh, to identify few teaching methods appropriate for the actualization of set outcome. So now I am going to give that outcome to the chat GPT, outcome to the chat GPT, and I, I am going to ask chat GPT what teaching learning activities uh, is there. So I have suggested a prompt because every time I don't want to say that you are an expert in OB. Now he knows that he's an expert in OB. So suggest a few teaching methods that could be applied to attain what outcome. What is outcome? Use linear programming. Uh, on an outcome-based format 
with appropriate indicators for formative evaluation means because teaching should progress together with an indicator whether indicator means sometimes it will be a quiz or sometimes it will be a test or sometimes it will be an activity to ensure whether the outcome is been attaining uh, so that is something very important uh, so uh, so you are asking uh, the chat gpt for this uh, uh, constructive alignment uh, uh, framework so uh, let me check it out uh, what chat gpt has been asked uh, saying Okay, certainly. Okay, ChatGPT is very happy. So it has been suggesting that you can adopt. See how many methods uh, it has been in suggesting. It has been suggesting a number of methods. Again, if you regenerate, it will uh, create. So okay, it is asking uh, if you want to attain that outcome, you can apply lecture and conceptual uh, workshop. So teaching method: conduct lectures to introduce the inner programming concept, followed by workshop where students can practice uh, formulating models. See, it has been suggested you can give a lecture or case studies and problem solving. Uh, present real case studies. So uh, uh, you can present it uh, by a lecture and conceptual workshops. So that is one method. The other method it is suggested uh, suggesting is that uh, you can use uh, uh, what uh, present uh, uh, real world case studies, real world case studies uh, for this or simulation and modeling, uh, guest lectures from the industries. Uh, uh, so uh, a peer a review. Uh, uh, so it has been suggesting some different different methods. And also, if you are applying this method, how will be able to identify whether the that is the assess students understanding through in class exercise you can give some exercises uh, to ensure that whether he has been able to use that so likewise evaluate uh, uh, completion and accuracy of the formulation model during uh, problem solving provide feedback of, uh, so likewise it is it will be giving suggestions like this so uh, this is very interesting uh, you can uh, bring uh, a, a number of stimulus variations into your teaching learning environment a number of innovations and uh, novelty you can bring it out through chat gpt so uh, this is what the different methods that GPT has suggested when I run this prompt. Every time it will be giving different, different variety will come in. So this is what lecture and demonstration. And uh, what ChatGPT has suggested is that quiz and short exercises. Then uh, problem-based uh, uh, learning, problem-based learning and case studies. That is, that is one uh, it has been suggested. So ability to formulate accurate models, collaborative learning. It has suggested collaborative learning, real world application projects. So these are the different methods that ChatGPT has suggested. And these are the different assessment, uh, formative assessment techniques that you could use it. So this is uh, what, suppose if I am taking this problem, lecture and demonstration, obviously that is a very common thing. So if I want to use problem based learning, PBL and case studies, uh, isn't it? I am going to ask ChatGPT, what learning activity? I, I preferred the second method, what problem based learning. So, uh, what activity, learning activity could uh, be uh, assigned to the students later to uh, problem based learning, PBL? So, uh, ChatGPT has suggested a number of uh, methods. Okay, these methods are good. So, I, I, you can select one method and you can ask ChatGPT what. Uh, what learning activity uh, uh, could be given to the students if I use, if I go with problem-based learning. So what learning activity could we suggest for problem-based learning uh, st uh, pro for students of level uh, MCA program uh, for attainment of what outcome for that outcome? Okay, uh, so let me run that prompt. Uh, let me run that prompt. What activity could you suggest? What activity could you suggest? Uh, okay, paste. Okay, so it has suggested uh, industry case studies. So what activities, if you are going with problem-based uh, learning, you can suggest industry case studies. Uh, provide case studies from specific industry that require application of linear programming for optimization. Or activity. Uh, post and optimization challenge related to the res resource allocation and production planning logistics or uh, assign a project where the students uh, need to develop so before you ask what method and now you're asking if i want to adopt that method what learning activity that i i could give so it has been suggesting so beautifully it has been suggesting beautifully optimization case studies provide real 
world optimization problems from different logistics. The same thing which uh, is been suggested now. Now, now uh, again, you are asking uh, Chat GPT just like you are asking a friend, isn't it? If I want to provide a real, uh, what uh, what would I like to give real world optimization problem? That is, if I want to provide a real world optimization problem from field like finance. Uh, it has suggested different uh, real world optimization uh, uh, problem from different uh, uh, area like logistics, supply chain management, finance, and resource allocations. So, you suppose if I'm suggesting finance, I am just asking ChatGPT to provide a real world optimization. I don't want to uh, repeat the entire story uh, from the very beginning that you are such and such person because he already knows it is in conversation with you. That is why ChatGPT is just like a person talking to you. So there is no need to say, okay, I am from the, this such and such. You have to act like this. You have to act like that. Once you have started your conversation, don't uh, unless and otherwise, if you are going to change the topic, uh, then you, you can uh, go with that. So provide a real world optimization problem from the field like finance for the attainment of that outcome. Every time outcome is important because it is outcome based. So I, I, I will check it out. Uh, uh, see what ChatGPT is going to say. Copying it, putting it here, because uh, if I uh, go on typing uh, like this, so it, it has given you an optimization portfolio related to finance, isn't it? So uh, from where did you start? You asked ChatGPT what method you have to adopt. So it has suggested a number of methods. Then you asked if I want to uh, uh, adopt this method, uh, what activity that you could give? So it has suggested a different activity. So suppose if I'm going with this activity, uh, you are uh, making it uh, uh, what scenario that you could, you should give to the students. So it has given that optimization portfolio, uh, very, very beautiful scenario. It has been, it, it has suggested that this is a scenario that the finance uh, institution manager, uh, uh, that is you have to act as a finance institution manager, a portfolio, the various institutions such as uh, stock uh, bonds, uh, optimization objective, uh, maximize the overall returns of the portfolios, uh, constraints, it has given you the full scenario. So, beginning from the methods, uh, for what activity, and pinpointing that activity, what scenario. So, this is the beauty. So, uh, the scenario, uh, you uh, work as a finance analyst of an investing. So, this is the scenario that you could give to the students. So, you can drill from top to bottom, down, 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 like methods, then what activity, then what scenario uh, related to that activity, chat GPT will be suggesting you. Okay. So this is how you can use the chat GPT for making uh, your teaching learning environment uh, a better space. Because in all this prompt, I have used what outcome, because this is outcome based. So in every activity, uh, I am just uh, uh, tailoring it uh, to an outcome context so that uh, chat GPT will be giving you uh, recommendations uh, that is related to that particular actualization of that outcome. So level one level two and what is level three assessments obviously uh, suppose if you want to uh, that is formative assessment is uh, should happen in between it will suggest that okay you can uh, give a, a small a quiz or you can just give a small activity uh, so you know to ensure whether the students are going ahead uh, while you are teaching and finally by the end of the uh, uh, topic uh, you have to make a summative evaluation summative evaluation is the final evaluation on uh, how much uh, uh, progress that has been made so, suggest a few course level assessment. Before what you have done is formative evaluation means small topic. So, these are the evaluation that is used for developmental questions uh, for progression to ensure that whether the students. So, after completing the course, isn't it? What all assessment activity you can give? Definitely one assessment activity is giving, the, giving them exams, isn't it? Uh, uh, apart from that, uh, you will be able to identify what are the difference. Okay, suggest a few course level assessment that could be administered for the assessment of the CEO. What is the CEO? Uh, okay, this is uh, CEO. Uh, we have first asked the chat GPT to, uh, to formulate CEO and we have selected the CEO and uh, we have used that CEO outcome based that CEO for identifying the methods, identifying that uh, uh, activities and identifying the scenario, everything that CEO, it is outcome based. And for assessment, again, outcome is that is why outcome is how to customize it. So I, I will just run this one.
let me check it out okay the different assessments it has been suggested uh, so it is uh, uh, different uh, assessments uh, so what is the assessment organize a section where the students can ex exchange the review and you can observe it so we know that uh, examinations is one method uh, online quiz you can design a quiz and check whether the students are uh, software implementations then uh, problem solving exam examinations so this is the external examinations that is conduct an examination comprising of the set of problems isn't it uh, case study uh, so likewise you can give a number of activities like problem solving assignment case studies and analysis online quiz and as so these are something that i have read it uh, then group presentation or uh, reports group presentations and reports uh, practical programming projects uh, written examination internal and external so it has suggested a number of activities by which you are able to assess the what level that students have attained that co so you can uh, so by this activity you can uh, 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 some has given you uh, uh, some inputs on uh, how to formulate uh, all these things uh, that is uh, how to uh, calculate that co level attainment like that so the, so it has suggested the different uh, uh, activities like this so next is that uh, it is important so course level uh, the course level attainment uh, uh, you are you ask the chat gpt the chat gpt has uh, suggested the different uh, assessment uh, uh, methods that could be adopted for assessing the particular co now one important thing uh, for an outcome based education is that we have to uh, uh, map every uh, co to the respective program outcomes that is your third class where minister sir was been uh, discussing on that how to map it you can ask that GPT, it will be helping. So let this let this be the program outcome. These are really the graduate attributes. And when we say program outcomes, this discipline knowledge should be translated into what outcome that you can see in the students. So uh, you can read uh, this as the graduate attribute or the program outcomes. This is the nutshell of the program outcomes. And this is the course outcome. How can I map this uh, course outcome to this? For this, I have given this prompt. So this prompt will be available uh, in that uh, LMS. So identify the mapping strength. Obviously, this is something very important. So mapping strength, if you want to identify the mapping strength, COPO mapping. OK, mapping. The mapping strength to disciplinary knowledge is very high mapping strength to communication skill so uh, communication skill means uh, if you are uh, the problem we are more concerned about problem solving so it is not uh, taking the communication to a very higher level moderate level okay the strength is true this strength is three critical thinking you are trying to uh, working with a, a big situation isn't it linear pro that is linear programming optimization so critical thinking problem solving you're solving a problem uh, analytical reasoning so see how beautifully it has said that uh, it has been mapping uh, to disciplinary knowledge content uh, very strong uh, uh, critical thinking very strong uh, problem solving very strong analytical reasoning so that co has been mapping all these uh, uh, pos at a very higher level and uh, communication skill obviously uh, that is he, he should be able to understand what is written uh, the more thing is on critical thinking so it is in a moderate level so that is how you can use that gpt for mapping so that co1 is mapped onto uh, this at uh, this level okay this is two uh, so uh, you, you will be able to identify it in that in that way in that way and now multiple choice questions definitely uh, by the end of this uh, you will be getting an a tool not only really multiple choice questions you can generate uh, 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 short answer questions you can uh, generate uh, uh, this uh, um, that is medium uh, level questions essay type questions uh, multiple choice questions fill in the blanks questions case study questions so like a variety of questions uh, could be generated by so uh, obviously uh, as a teacher handling courses in optimization uh, research prepare two multiple choice question related to uh, course outcome I'm just using the course outcome. Utilize linear programming problem. One question should be from understanding level. Okay, you can just uh, suggest Bloom's taxonomy also. 
uh, and the other from application level let me check it out let me check it out whether it is working okay uh, it is creating it is creating okay uh, two questions are, uh, it is suggested okay uh, see understanding level question isn't it what is the primary objective of uh, utilizing linear programming question uh, and uh, application level questions imagine that uh, you are tasked with an optimization pro uh, and uh, calculate the average production outcome so that is uh, an application level question and the correct answers it has been suggesting the correct answers so uh, you are able if you want to regenerate another once again click uh, regenerate again isn't it uh, it has been uh, correcting what is the primary purpose of using uh, linear programming problems in operation research that is understanding uh, just to, uh, your concept what is the primary purpose do did you understand what uh, uh, is the purpose of using and what is the, uh, this one uh, consider the ma manufacturing company this is an application question where uh, isn't it uh, what, uh, okay uh, which is the following represent the correct objective functions it is asking you to write the objective function giving you the scenario so applying uh, this uh, and writing this the correct answer is this. so this is uh, how you are able to uh, create any type of questions so once you are working with the uh, ai tool definitely uh, you will be having different types of question paper generating uh, uh, scenario uh, so uh, th this is uh, again so uh, this is one of the question and again uh, obviously in an outcome based education uh, scenario uh, there is both uh, uh direct assessments direct assessments is teachers are assessing the students assessments student performance either by test assignment uh, portfolio project uh, external examination they're directly assessing but uh, uh this uh, outcome based education uh, gives an opportunity for self-evaluation you can ask the students uh, directly and you can take a 10 percent weightage from that uh, their perspective on self-evaluation that uh, how much you do you think that you have attained that outcome like that you can pause questions or you can have uh, take uh, uh, that is a survey uh, type questions uh, from uh, these uh, uh, the third party uh, like uh, if you're sending the students for internship program uh, taking their observations or from peer evaluations suppose if the students are working with a uh, group project uh, you can take uh, how the students are evaluating the others through the different surveys. So, uh, survey is something very important uh, for uh, uh, this indirect assessment. So, you can uh, create uh, these uh, uh, survey type questions as, as a teacher handling operational research and prepare a survey type questions uh, for indirect assessment of, uh, okay. So, uh, you can use that one. Uh, because uh, we have limited time, uh, Dr. Mendes uh, have to uh, follow this one after this. So uh, all these prompts will be available uh, in that LMS. So you can uh, check it out there. So what question you will be giving for survey? So, so uh, corresponding to every corresponding to every outcome, you can create. I only ask them to create one question, isn't it? Uh, from a scale of one to four, where one represent no idea, uh, represent, uh, please rate your confidence in utilizing. Okay. Uh, so what is your confidence? I, I, so uh, it has uh, come into this format. So you can formulate survey type questions uh, uh, for indirect uh, assessments also. Uh, so, uh, and finally, uh, obviously, uh, we've, I told that the outcome based education pro progresses in a cycle. Formulation is there. The interacting constructive alignment asking chat gpt about the methods and about the uh, different uh, uh, different types of assessment tools uh, how to map how to create questions all these things you can ask chat gpt and uh, uh, final evaluations uh, and then how we, we have to improvise that is uh, how to modify the uh, ob curriculum from the feedback uh, of the stakeholders so uh, how to uh, do that that also you can ask the chat gpt isn't it so uh so how to uh, how to work with the uh, uh how to uh, improvise i told that for every cycle when one student pass out 
one group passed out uh, that is uh, we have to go with the periodical uh, structuring and restructuring uh, whereby uh, enhancing the quality of the system that is important so how to do that the so ga gather specific feedback collect uh, a detailed uh, and specific feedback from the stakeholders including students so on the basis of the st st uh, feedback you can improvise chat gpt has been suggesting you align with industry needs because we know that uh, one of the important concerns of uh, uh, this uh, is uh, to uh, fix them to a career and industry. So always align the curriculum with the industry needs. Enhance assessment strategies. Uh, so assessment strategies should be enhanced because then only we'll be able to uh, check out whether the students are progressing in the right way. This is the suggestions which has been giving. So on the basis of the suggestions, we can go work out with the, uh, this uh, uh, improvisation, uh, imp improvisation of this. So this is how we have to progress. So uh, obviously, uh, the in this topology formulation phase, uh, how to uh, identify the graduate attribute, how to convert the graduate attribute into program uh, uh, outcome, uh, then how to uh, create a course outcome from the given syllabus. Then uh, uh, when there is a course outcome, what all method methodologies uh, uh, will be uh, apt for that particular attainment of the, uh, what all activities, what all scenarios likewise, uh, and what are formative evaluation techniques that could be adopted uh, while teaching. Then after teaching, uh, how to, uh, you can ask ChatGPT to prepare a question paper for you uh, on, uh, uh, with respect to that particular outcomes. So question paper will be uh, prepared on the basis of that outcome. So you can prepare a question paper by giving the syllabus or you can give that outcome. When it is outcome-based out, uh, education, give that outcome and ask to prepare questions. And you can map these outcomes uh, uh, with the, uh, the POs and the, at the, what strength like voice. And finally, you can ask ChatGPT how I can improvise that entire topology. The ChatGPT has given you suggestions. Ask stakeholders, revise the content like likewise, uh, uh, then uh, align it with the industrial requirements. A lot of suggestions have been given. On the basis of the suggestions, you can uh, improvise. So this is how uh, ChatGPT uh, help you uh, in customizing uh, the, your work. So don't think that this is a scenario that has been happening. I am talking <laughs> and the time is right to have a good nap. It's not that. Uh, all, this is awesome. ChatGPT is a real workhouse. Now we have got even more time for meetings and sleeping. So when ChatGPT has been integrated into your activities, definitely uh, your workload will be reduced by at least by 60 to 70 percent so that uh, it will be giving you a lot of recommendations, a lot of innovations, variety by which you can uh, pick up uh, what is apt for an environment. And you, there is no need to go and hunt for a lot of things. It will be bringing everything to your uh, canvas and you can just uh, select and make it happen. So your workload will be reduced to about 50 to 60 percent. So uh, you will be having a lot of time to get involved in uh, any other uh, activities uh, that is uh, that is uh, for interacting with the students or something like that. So your workload could be uh, reduced. So uh, that is uh, how the chat GPT could be effectively used. Chat GPT or AI tools. Because uh, all we, now we are having a number of AI tools uh, which has been uh, uh, every day you, you will be coming. Uh, that is AI uh, tools for uh, preparing presentations. Uh, in every AI tools, the backend will be chat GPT. Uh, about uh, 60 to 70 percent of the AI tools, uh, it, they are using the API of uh, chat GPT and only creating it. So what is this? Prepare a tank note. Okay, I, I would like to give a thanks to you uh, I, I will just ask ChatGPT to, uh, because I am uh, depending on ChatGPT for all these things, then why should I say uh, thanks by myself? I will be asking ChatGPT uh, to render a thanks for you. Okay, I will read what ChatGPT. Uh, dear participants, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to your active participations in the seven-day faculty development program on ChatGPT and AI tools, jointly organized by St. Albert's College, Ernakulam, and Kerala State Higher Education Council. Your enthusiasm and engagement have significantly contributed to the success of the program. Thank you. The thanks also has, uh, ChatGPT has taken uh, the role uh, to give thanks. Okay, so this is the thanks that I am giving you uh, through ChatGPT. So uh, that is all uh, for my from my part, uh, and obviously, uh, uh, Mendes, I uh, have to follow. Uh, so if the, if you have any queries, 
Sijin, over to you. If you have any queries, uh, we'll take. Yeah, uh, uh, sir, if you put your chat on, you can see some queries there in your screen. Would you like to take it from there? Okay, uh, PSOs yeah. are mentioned by you in the previous class. So, PO and PSO is mentioned here. Obviously, obviously, I have just given only a small example. You can use uh, chat GPT for uh, uh, getting PO, uh, PSOs by giving uh, correct prompt. You can prompt it. Prompt, prompt is nothing but you are communicating with the chat GPT in a verbal form. At that verbal statement, you can uh, say it as prompt. Obviously. Uh, these POs are institution level. Definitely, POs are institution level. Uh, every teachers don't. There is no need to uh, sit there and create uh, uh, POs. POs. I just uh, shown uh, the instances where ChatGPT may help you, isn't it? So I, uh, it will be uh, so giving you about 70 uh, to 80 percent solutions, and the rest you can modify it and make it uh, uh, even better. Okay. Wonderful sir. chat GPT is even faster than Google. Yeah, Google is only a text search. It will give you a, a list of list of websites uh, and links where you can refer and uh, uh, develop some content. The chat GPT gives you solutions. Just like talking to a person, the person gives you solution. Just like chat GPT is giving, giving solutions according to your questions. That's a bigger difference. For the same text uh, prompt multiple times, will ChatGPT respond to the same? Uh, because the ChatGPT output has been given on the basis of learning. That is, uh, about 30 to 40 percent, uh, you will be having similar things. But every time you regenerate, definitely it will uh, try to bring about some changes in the prompt. Okay. Sir, the volume after oh, that's. Uh... Uh, th that is uh, from the uh, initial phase. I, so I think I've answered everything because. Uh, question, sir. Oh, Does okay. 3000 word limit uh, is for a question or for a login? Does 3000 word limit is for a question or for a login? That is, uh, if you are if you are referring to a uh, prompt, uh, you can uh, have prompt. Uh, uh, that is a, a, a prompt size. Okay, you can have that much of words for uh, uh, asking questions to the uh, this chat GPT. Okay. It's not for a login for uh, every prompt. Every prompt uh, you can have that much of uh, uh, words uh, accommodated into the prompt to make the things clear. So I think uh, I've answered, uh, and I think uh, uh, whatever question you can directly ask ChatGPT. Now uh, ChatGPT has become your friend. Okay. So whatever thing you ask ChatGPT, you can see the wonder uh, how it is been answering. Okay. So uh, make the best use of uh, these AI tools. AI tools is not the master; it is still your slave. You are the masters uh, because you should have that competencies to accept or reject what it says. Sometimes it may uh, give some. Uh, wrong answers, it can happen because it is only not matured 100%. It is only about 70% accuracy. Uh, but uh, gradually, it will pick up. So, uh, chat GPT uh, is not a substitute. It is only something which will complement your activities. So, uh, you can enjoy it. Uh, enjoy the possibilities of chat GPT. So, thank you. And I'm very happy uh, to come back and to be uh, with you for some more time. Because first two days, I really enjoyed with you. And now, okay. So, Thank uh, you, Dr. Sunil Job. Okay, thank, thank you for the wonderful you. session. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. I hope everybody will start using ChatGPT from now on. Now we will move on to the next session. That will be a topic on OBE, AI assisted assessment tools, broad ahead, and feedback session. <clears throat> the session will be taken by Dr. Mendes Jacob, who's a professor and director, PG Department of Computer Applications, Marine College, Kotikanam Autonomous. Dr. Mendes Jacob has also served as a resource person for many national and international seminars and conferences in mathematics, management, and computer application. He has organized, conducted, and served as a resource person for a number of faculty development programs, including UGC-sponsored refresher courses, 
his areas of interest include national education policy, outcome based education, accreditation, etc. Mr. Jacob is also the CEO of IPSA Solutions Limited, an IT company supporting higher education institutions in the implementation of outcome based education and innovative teaching, learning, and assessment strategies. Over to you, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Please proceed. And welcome to the last uh, technical session of this uh, seven day faculty development program. So, for the last seven days, we were having a walkthrough through the OB fundamentals, then ChatGPT and AI tools. So, today we will definitely um, go through some uh, ICT tools, some free tools which are available, and also uh, an AI tool which will help you in the assessments. Actually, uh, many of the faculty members, they think that uh, calculating the attainment level, that is the last thing uh, we have to do for uh, OB implementation. Of course, that is what we have to do. Uh, but, uh, you know, for accreditation purpose, uh, uh, many of you may be, uh, you know, uh, calculating the attainment level. But more than that, if you want to properly implement OB, you have to identify some innovative teaching, learning and assessment strategies. Uh, then there is a concern for every faculty member. So last week I was traveling through the North Indian, uh, some of the universities and institutions and everywhere the concern of the faculty members was, you know, uh, uh, about the workload, whether the, uh, the OB implementation will increase the workload. But if you are a smart worker, like uh, if you can identify some tools and uh, through which you can reduce the workload or you can do the smart work, I will introduce you some, uh, uh, some tools. Uh, which are freely available that is already there in the learning management system. If you have uh, um, access to the LMS, there are many education tools already listed there with the videos and how to use it. So I will just uh, give you an idea about uh, one of the tools and uh, another AI tool. And then we will go through uh, some, uh, you know, uh, some best practices and uh, the road ahead, how we implement uh, OB in our institutions in a proper way like that. And uh, before that, I have a question for you. Uh, how many of you have used Padlet, which is there in our LMS? Uh, how many of you have used Padlet before? Or are you using it? Just put an yes in the chat box if you're using it. And Padlet is one of the tools, ICT tools, which are available free of cost, so that you can use it uh, for your, uh, uh, many of the teaching learning activities. But, uh, I'm seeing more no's. Okay. So just I will give you some idea about how we can use uh, Padlet in a better way for our assessments. Okay, I'll share the screen. Just one minute. Yeah, this is the Padlet. You can go to Padlet.com and you can uh, have a free sign up. Uh, this uh, uh, tool is available free of cost so that you can use it uh, uh, for your assessment activities. And uh, in the learning management system, you are using this Padlet and there is a video on Padlet and uh, uh, how you can use it. There are many unique ways to use Padlet that also is listed there. So in the LMS, you have a partlet like this where you are uploading your course outcomes. You can see the course outcomes are already uploaded. Some of uh, many of the faculty members they have uploaded the course outcomes. But these course outcomes, you uh, you have got it for, by using ChatGPT. You no, know? you have created it by using ChatGPT. And uh, again, uh, partlet is also using generative AI. See, I'm not monitoring this. This is my Padlet. Uh, this Padlet is there in the uh, in the LMS, and you are uploading your um, uh, your course outcomes. And I'm not moderating it. The moderation is done automatically through a. Okay, uh, I will show you another Padlet, which I have used for uh, uh, submitting assignments by my students. So I have 60 students uh, in my MCA class. 
uh, I'm handling a course called the operational research. Okay. Uh, this is an assignment I have given for the students. Uh, you can read the assignment. It's a video creation task. Okay. Uh, identify problem, a real life problem. They have to identify, develop an OR model, operational research model, and find the solution. They can use any of the methods for finding the solution. They have to create a PPT and upload it. Finally, you can create a video. That means after uh, creating, the, uh, first of all, they have to identify the problem. Then they have to upload it in the Padlet. And after approval, they have to create a PPT. Then they have to upload it. And finally, they have to create a video. And uh, if the video is good, of uh, good quality, uh, we will host it in our uh, official YouTube channel. And they can refer it in their resume also. Uh, this is a cardinal activity, continuous assessment in deep learning. That is one of the continuous assessments uh, uh, in our college. Uh, marks will be distributed as follows. You can read it. Quality of the problem, 25%. Model formulation, 25%. Solution, 25%. PPT and video, 25%. And the condition is every problem should be unique. If there is a duplication, it will be rejected. So you can upload the problem first, then the PPT with the script. Okay. So this is the task they have to do. And I have given this task in the morning uh, before one o'clock. And uh, the students started uploading their, ass uh, their assignments from 2.30 in the afternoon onwards. And the last student, the 60th student uh, uploaded the, uh, the assignment, the topic uh, at 10 o'clock in the night. So usually what happens when, when we uh, give assignments, uh, the last day, all the students will submit it, and maybe most of them, they will copy from somewhere else, or uh, most of them are almost similar answers. See, here what happens, everything is transparent. The first student has uploaded the, uh, the topic, the, and this is the final video. They have completed everything. Then the second student like that, and it is transparent. Every student can see what is the assignment or what is the topic suggested by or post, uh, uploaded by the other student and the lazy fellow at the end he has to go through all these topics uh, to learn all these topics then he will be submitting the the topic at the end the talk so this is transparent and there is a collaborative learning happening here and uh, the monitoring will be done by the tool okay so in that way you can motivate the students. Even uh, some of the good students, they will submit it uh, immediately after we give the assignment. And uh, I haven't given any deadline or anything like that, but automatically in the first day itself, I got all the topics. Okay, so these are some tools where we can use it for many purposes. Uh, uh, the dashboard, you can see many of my partlets are there. Uh, not only the video creation task, see for example, there are, uh, the details of the students uh, they have posted the details their uh, their short profiles and photos like this these are also available i'm not making it public this is a private one so just for uh, your information so there are many ways we can use partlet and all these are there in the uh, in the lms there's a video and uh, uh, there are more than 25 unique ways uh, there are more than 25 unique ways where you can use Padlet. And this is completely free. You can go to Padlet.com. Just go to Padlet.com and you can create your own account. You can sign up there. And uh, there is some limitation for a, a free account. But this is a paid account. For me, I'm paying uh, around 1,500 rupees per year uh, because I'm using it for all my faculty development programs, for all my online sections everywhere. So this is uh, one of the tools you can use it uh, for free. And there are many other tools available uh, which are given in the learning management system. You can just go through those tools. Okay. Now coming to another tool. Uh, this is another AI assisted assessment tool. It's called the question paper dot AI. I will give you an idea about this one. And uh, all the paid participants, you will get it. Uh, you will have a complimentary access of this uh, 
particular tool from today onwards. Uh, you can use it. We have invested a lot of time, lot of resources into it. And uh, from next week onwards, uh, this is available for institution usage. Okay. Uh, how we can use this question paper dot uh, This is the uh, uh, this is the uh, platform. Uh, you can see a template gallery here. Uh, there are some ready-made templates available. Uh, these are all question paper templates. There are some ready-made templates available. You can read it. What is the template one? Three sections with the MCQ, multiple choice questions, short essay and the long essay. This is template one. Template two, a single section dedicated to uh, uh, MCQ questions only. So in the template two, you will have only multiple choice questions. Similarly, template three, template four, and there are few, uh, I think there are five ready-made templates available. And uh, if you are satisfied with these ready-made templates, you can choose one and you can start uh, creating a question paper. Otherwise, you can create your own template. Okay, I'll show you how we can then write a question paper. Suppose I'm using template one. If you want to see the preview of this uh, template one, you can go to the preview. So this is the way the template one will work. There are multiple choice questions, options are given. There are five questions, multiple choice questions. Then we have short essay questions. Okay, then long essay questions. Okay. Now, if I am using template one, if you, I want to create a question paper, create question paper, you can click there. Suppose I can give the name of my exam. Suppose it is a model exam uh, or, uh, uh, or an internal exam, whatever it, we can give the name there. I'm using template one and the institution type, college or school. Now I'm using it for my college. Institution name we can give here. I already given the institution name, so that suggestion is coming there. And program you can choose. Uh, my program is MCA program, so I'm choosing MCA. And you can have the code of the course code. Suppose this is the course code, and I'm just giving the course name. So bridge course in mathematics. Okay, this is the course name. So only this much we have to enter. And now we are going to generate a question paper. Uh, you can see the Bloom's taxonomy levels. Suppose uh, I'm adding one more understanding level, applying and analyzing. There are three Bloom's taxonomy levels I have added. And the difficulty level of the question that also we can add. Suppose I'm adding challenging also, medium and challenging. I want questions in that category. I can generate instantly. That means the entire question paper in one go, or I can generate section wise. So I will try with the generate instantly. Okay. So uh, here we can enter the topic or the syllabus, or even if you give the name of the book, it will accept. So suppose I'm entering the topic, sorry, entering the syllabus. So this is my syllabus. There are five modules. Suppose I'm adding two modules, just copying the, uh, the two modules syllabus, and I'm adding it here and just copying, pasting the, the syllabus, two module syllabus, then generate. Okay, so you can have topic name or even book name or the syllabus, part of the syllabus, like that. You can add whatever you want. Or even uh, if the syllabus is in the PDF format, you can upload that PDF format. That also is acceptable. So maybe in uh, 30 seconds maximum or maximum one minute, you will get the entire question papers. But uh, uh, um, you know, this is uh, generate AI, so um, we cannot say that it is 100% accurate, okay. But with your expertise, you can modify the questions. So this is the question. We have the multiple choice questions. The options are given. Then uh, answer key is also available. You can see the answer key. Then we have the short answer questions. Answer key is available. Okay, then uh, we have the essay questions, say A or B questions, answer key is available, likewise. And you can see the knowledge level written there. And if you find that there is a uh, change or a, uh, the knowledge level given is not correct, you can change it. If it is K1, you can edit it manually. You can put K1 there, that also is possible. Uh, and 
any of the questions, if you are not satisfied with, you can edit manually. The editor is available here, or you can copy paste a question from uh, somewhere else and you can, uh, you can copy from somewhere else and you can paste it here. Uh, okay. Or if you want delete, if you are not satisfied with the two questions, for example, question number six, I'm not satisfied. I can delete it. And question number seven, if I'm not satisfied with question number seven, again, I can delete it. So I have deleted two questions. And in those places now, I have to add questions. So there is a link. Now it appears here. You can add questions the same way. If you want to change the Bloom stats on available levels, you can change it. You can add, for example, instead of analyzing, you can put evaluate. And if you want to remove understanding, that also is possible. And only if you want easy and medium questions here, you can put it. And if you want to change the topic, uh, if you want uh, that particular question from a different topic, you can put it. Otherwise, the same topic uh, you can add. So you have deleted two questions. You have deleted two questions. But in that place, you will get another eight or ten suggestions. Okay, so that you can pick from those suggested questions. The, the AI platform will suggest a, a few questions, maybe uh, eight or ten questions you will get. So we have deleted only two questions. So if with any of the questions, if you are not satisfied, you can see these are the questions suggested by the platform. So you can choose, say, for example, one another question, this one. So you can choose two out of these suggested questions. And now we can see we have deleted question number six and seven. We have deleted question number six and seven. So in that place, we have so um, the replaced the questions which got we got again from the A platform. Okay. Now if you want how an explanatory answer instead of this answer key, if you want uh, more explanation for that answer. Again, you can just click that refresh button answer key. This uh, just click there so that you will get more explanation for that particular question. See, more explanation for that particular question. So this is available. Okay. Now, if you want to map course outcomes, I have already uploaded course outcome to this platform. So the course outcomes are available. Each uh, all the course outcomes are. You can now map question number one. Suppose I'm mapping with the course outcome number one. So with a mapping string two. Question number two with the CO2 with a mapping string three, like that. If you can map the questions and uh, just update it. Now you can see the the knowledge level and uh, the CO course outcomes are also displayed along with the question. Okay. Now, if you want to see the preview, the preview of the question paper or question with answer, both are available. So if you want to give to the students, you need to have the question paper alone without answer key. See the question format will be like this. This is the question paper template. We have chosen and the question paper is available. Now you can take the printout. You can download it. It has a PDF format and you can take the printout and you can provide it to the students. So maximum it will take five to 10 minutes for uh, generating or creating a question paper of your choice. Okay. And suppose if you want to um, do it, you know, section wise, uh, the same question paper, suppose you want do it in the section wise. Uh, that also is possible. Sorry, I will choose the same template. Uh, create a question paper. Again, I have to choose generation section wise. Okay.
Now this is the first section. Only the MCQs, the first section. Okay, so you can add questions to the section one. The same way you can choose the taxonomy levels or uh, the difficulty levels. The same way I can enter the topic here. <clears throat> here the advantage is uh, we have only five multiple choice questions listed there, but we will get more options. So if you create section wise, you will get more options so that you can select five out of the options provided by the a platform now you can see more than five questions are available maybe eight or ten questions are available so you can choose five and instantly you can map with the cs also if required suppose i'm choosing uh, five questions out of this okay so you have chosen five then insert the all my mcq questions the part one there are only five questions so i have more choice so that i can pick the questions from there uh, the questions of uh, which are uh, quality questions or according to me uh, i thought it's fit for this particular exam okay so this is the way we can generate a question paper uh, you can upload the course outcomes like this here we can add course outcomes, um, which scale you, we are using. If we are using a perform scale or a for mapping or a five point scale or a six point scale, all these things you can add there. Course code you can add. Then uh, the course outcomes you can add. And again, if you want to create a new template, uh, that is also possible. You can create your own template. If you are not satisfied with the ready-made template, you can create your own template, like you can input the template name, template description, college, institution name, etc. Mark and uh, uh, section name and what will be the section type, answer any questions or answer alternative questions, etc. The question type you can choose. What type of question you want, short answer or multiple choice in that particular section. Or if you want case study, uh, long essay questions whatever you want you can put it there so that you can create your own template that is also possible so i have created some questions i give you some example like a case study if you want a case study this is the case study i have created for uh, mca uh, my topic uh, my course is brand management suppose i want a, a case study on brand management for mca students you can see the case study is brand management the digital age so because it's a MCA program, uh, this case also be related to uh, uh, brand management in the digital age. So the case study is there, the questions based on that case, it is available. And suppose if you have uh, uh, another question, uh, another question paper I'll show you. Uh, this is a short story of class 11. We are not afraid to die if we can all be together. This is a, uh, a short story for a class 11 of CBC syllabus. Just I have input that uh, story name. So I have <clears throat> got questions. MCQ, short answer questions, then long answer questions, everything. So even for parents, this is useful for their ch children. No, if they are studying in. Uh, uh, in the CBC school, uh, it will be of help for the students. They will get the questions, they will get the answers so that they can study. They can consider this as a guide. So in that way, we can create a lot of question purpose uh, for the faculty members. You know, uh, with the maximum spending uh, five to ten minutes, we can have uh, our own question purpose especially for uh, multiple choice questions, you know, all the options are available there. Otherwise, we have to spend more time for uh, uh, having these uh, um, uh, options to identify the options for a particular MCQ. And uh, many of the faculty members, if you are a question paper setters, definitely you may have take one or two days for uh, 
setting a question purpose for the university or for the autonomous colleges. There also it is easy for you to uh, use this tool. Again, uh, with my experience, I can tell you, uh, I, I got many unique questions, which I couldn't have thought of previously. So that way, this is useful. So the, all the uh, paid participants, you will get uh, complimentary access uh, from today onwards so that you can try and use it and you can give your suggestions. So we are investing a lot of resources, a lot of time, uh, mainly uh, we have senior academicians who are uh, uh, helping us for um, developing this tool and uh, experts in AI and also IT professionals, they're also involved. And we, from the next week onwards, uh, this is available for institution usage. Uh, for the first 100 institutions, actually we are planning to provide it uh, for a nominal cost uh, with uh, less than 10,000 rupees, the entire institution can use it. So this will help uh, uh, in the accreditation process. Uh, even, you know, the NAC accreditation and all, uh, there is a question of the ICT tools, which ICT tools you are using. Now you can mention about the AI assisted assessment. So this is a platform where you can use it and uh, definitely you can showcase it uh, when the peer team visits your institution. So for the first 100 um, institutions, uh, we are already some of the institutions, they are asked for this particular platform. So the, for the institution, every faculty member, they can use it. So this is about this uh, tool. If you have any, any doubts, so we can clear it maybe. Uh, definitely, uh, there is an individual license for the uh, tool. Uh, and uh, the cost is uh, less than the cost of a chicken biryani. So it's very cost effective and we want every faculty member to use it. That's why, uh, you know, for a nominal price, we are offering it only to cover our expenses mainly initially. Okay. Now, uh, totally the pilot, uh, even the, the LMS, uh, that is again another tool uh, which you can use for a, for implementing outcome-based education because, you know, <clears throat> uh, uh, the, yeah, uh, the learning management system already we have a learning management system you might have uh, used it for the last seven years uh, for the first 100 colleges uh, for a college you will get it less than 10,000 rupees okay so you can contact the the, the numbers which is already provided in the chat box for LMA support you can uh, Contact them so that uh, you know they will give, give you an idea. Less than ten thousand rupees, you, uh, the institution can use it. The entire faculty members can use it. Okay. So we will be uh, providing them with the uh, credits. Actually, when we use uh, AI, you know, uh, uh, according to the usage, uh, uh, the credits will be consumed. Okay. So you'll get uh, two thousand credits. So this LMS again, I will tell you, uh, this is another excellent uh, tool. Uh, Moodle is an open source platform. Uh, every fac every institution can customize it. You, uh, already you have uh, gone through the some of the tasks and assignments, uh, especially you know the workshop activity. Lot of learning is happening through the workshop activity because you are uh, uh, submitting, you are asking the student to submit the task and uh, uh, the Every, again, the students are evaluating the, uh, the assignments uh, submitted by the other students. So we are bringing them to the next level. So evaluate means the fifth level of Bloom's taxonomy. And a lot of learning will happen. And uh, without much effort from the, the faculty member, a lot of learning is happening there. Uh, again, we have uh, the lesson activity. So uh, lesson activity means there is a uh, video or content will provide through lesson activity and uh, every participant has to go through the videos they have to attend the mcqs and if they pass for the mcq test then only they can proceed otherwise they have to again you know go through the content so in that way we can say the assurance of learning is happening through these uh, processes so uh, if you can properly use moodle lms this is open source. It's a free uh, software. 
so that uh, you can implement the OB in a proper way by using these tools. Now, uh, coming to the uh, uh, OB road ahead, uh, I'll just give you one presentation and after that I will clear all your doubts in just one minute. We will quickly go through these slides. Uh, we'll be summing up uh, all the topics which we have covered here. So, what is OB? I think we will quickly go through this slide. Just uh, you know, a revision. Outcome ed education focus on learning outcomes. That so is very important rather than just teaching inputs. In the, it emphasizes the skills, knowledge, and the competencies of students. Uh, how, uh, the student should possess at the end of a course or a program. OB defines specific, measurable, and attainable learning outcomes for students. These are the things we have already discussed. These outcomes describe what students should be able to do or demonstrate by the end of their education. OB emphasizes the development of practical skills and competencies relevant to the real world. It aims to prepare students for their future careers by focusing on applied knowledge and hands-on experiences. Okay. Then with OB implementation, okay, I will just uh, mention the OB implementation process. If you're planning to implement OB in your institution, first of all, a thorough idea of the concept, the basic concept like Bloom's taxonomy and OB architecture, that is very important. Uh, start with Bloom's taxonomy. Then you can prepare the OB manual. So once you prepare the OB manual, uh, a template is available in the LMS. You can download that template and you can prepare your own OB manual for the institution. So in the OB manual, you have to mention all about the policies. Even uh, somebody was asking the mapping strength, if you can change the mapping strength, you can put everything in the OB manual, uh, the policies and everything. So that once if you prepare the OB manual, the advantage is in criteria one, you can start for the NAC accreditation process from criteria one onwards, you can mention about OB. You can start with the OB manual, how you have designed the curriculum, how the curriculum, how effectively you are delivering the curriculum, all these things you can mention about the OB manual there. That formulation of outcomes is very important. Curriculum development and outcome mapping. Once if you have the outcomes, then you can start curriculum development. Then the mapping process, identifying innovative teaching, learning, and assessment methods. Okay, that is more important than just calculating and attainment. Preparation of outcomes, the outcome oriented course plans and assessment plans. OB focused question paper generation using ICT tools or AE tools, definitely. OB manual is available in the learning management system. Uh, the LMS provided to you. OB manual is available. Uh, the template is available and uh, the content is also available, like how to prepare it. Many uh, things are there. Then attainment calculation, you can use ICT rules. Manually, it is not possible. You cannot calculate the attainment manually. Uh, leave it to the ICT tools. Then generating and understanding reports on OB. I have already explained some of the that uh, the analytics on analytics reports on OB, which are useful for again for accreditation process, analyzing feedback and improvising the process. So we need the analytical reports. Then only you can analyze the feedback and improvise the process. The benefits of OB definitely by this time we understood what are the benefits. OB provides clarity on what students should achieve, reducing ambiguity. Students and instructors have a clear understanding of the desired outcomes and can work towards them. Health institutions ensure desired levels of knowledge and skills, assurance of learning. If you can mention assurance of learning in your accreditation process, definitely your score will be high because that is the trend now. When we implement outcome-based education, uh, we are assuring every student joining in our institution a certain level of knowledge, a skill, or attitude, whatever it is. So there is a target. We fix a target for every outcomes, and uh, we are trying to achieve that target. Okay. Helps institutions identify areas for improvement in teaching methods, curriculum, and learning outcomes. Then student-centered learning. OB promotes active learning, engagement, and critical thinking. Uh, you know, critical thinking, creative, then and problem solving. These are the skills of the 21st century. 
students take responsibility for learning and are actively involved in the learning process. Once we start with the activities, innovative activities for learning, definitely students themselves, they will be interested in doing it. OB, the Q factor in academies, the quality factor. Implementation of innovative teaching, learning, and evaluation methods definitely improve the quality of teaching and quality of learning. Then improves placements. Proper implementation of processes, that is very important because uh, I already mentioned about the OB manual. So the OB manual, you can mention about the processes and everything. Then uh, improves accreditation ratings. You can mention OB in every criteria of NAC. For NBA, already OB is there, but for a NAC process, NAC accreditation process, starting from criteria one. In criteria two, you can identify the slow learners, advanced learners based on the reports from the OB attainment calculation. Then you can identify outlays, already I have shown the reports there. Then the experiential learning. Why we are implementing experiential learning? When we are implementing OB, we are implementing many of the uh, many of the things like project money for projects, um, uh, other activities. Okay, these are these, all these are coming under experiential learning. Then in criteria three, uh, criteria four, everywhere you can mention about OB, and in criteria seven, the SDGs, uh, you can uh, bring it to the POs. Improves placements, uh, proper implementation of processes. Again, the last one helps to meet the challenges of NEP. And the new education policy, it's uh, we have an outcome-based approach there. And ChatGPT and AI tools uh, for educators, how it will help? Because uh, you know it will reduce our workload over a period of time. AI-powered assessment tools can be used for designing the curriculum, outcomes, syllabus assessments, etc. So in this AI platform, now we have created the question paper. You can create question paper. Maybe in one or two weeks. You can have your course outcomes. If you submit the syllabus, you will get the course outcomes. And if you submit the course outcomes, you will get the syllabus, the suggested activities, everything. So we are incorporating many things into that. And again, with this question paper dot a that tool, you can have um, you know any time assessments. For example, if you are conducting, uh, if you have a, a section of two or three hours in a day, and at the end of the section, you can have an assessment. You can create a question paper on the spot, maybe an MCQ, and you can conduct an assessment so that the section is over, the assessment is also over. So when we implement OB, uh, more assessments should be there. That is the best practice. Then only you can have, you will get the accurate attainment calculations. AI powered assessment tools can automate the evaluation of assignments, at sums, and projects. So in future, definitely we can have the automated evaluation. This streamlines the assessment process, provides quick feedback to students, and reduces the burden on the instructors. ChatGPT and the A tools can recommend relevant learning resources such as articles, videos, interactive modules based on students' individual needs and learning goals. This assists students in assessing additional materials to reinforce their understanding of specific topic. Most of the students they are using ChatGPT now. Okay, A tools can contribute to the ongoing improvement of OB implementation. By analyzing student data and feedback, educators can identify areas of improvement in the curriculum, the instructional strategies, and assessment methods. So with the uh, ChatGPT and the A tools, we can do many more things. Okay, so this is a quote by Elon Musk. AI will not replace you, but a person using AI will. Definitely in future, if you are not using AI, uh, we will be uh, replaced by some AI platforms or AI tools. Okay, so you can contact me in future. Uh, this is my number. This is a WhatsApp number. You can uh, send uh, uh, messages or uh, you can call me or you can send mail uh, mail regarding any support or any help if required. Okay, and uh, uh, we'll have a quick feedback, and after that. Uh, I will answer your queries. There are some questions in the chat box. Definitely, I will answer them. Uh, before that, you will have. A, we need a feedback also. For that, I will share again a Mentimeter slide. Okay. 
Um, I'm sharing a Mendimeter slide in the chat box. I've shared a Mendimeter slide in the chat box. Please go through that Mendimeter slide. Otherwise, um, you can use this. Uh, uh, you can go to mendy.com. Uh, and you can use the code, which is given there. So the link is there in the chat box. You can go through that. Uh, the link and you can give your response. This is the question. What is your opinion about this blended model of FDP, which incorporates both interactive dissections and LMS based task and assignments? Uh, please give your response. Go to that link. You can give the response there in the chat box. The link is available. Or you can go to mendy.com. It's given in the top of the screen, mendy.com. And you can use the code. Six seven double seven nine seven two five. Even on the top. We'll have a quick feedback session, and after that, I will answer your queries. Thirty seconds or more. Please respond. So, with the new education policy, you know you can start blended model of uh, uh, post delivery so that you can have videos, uh, you can have live sections, you can use uh, some learning management platform like this. So you can ask the students to go through the content uh, there in the LMS and more learning will be happening. See, for example, this is a seven day faculty development program. This is supposed to be a full day program, but only uh, two hours we have the online section, and you are getting lot of content in the LMS. So the Higher Education Council is very particular that this should be a quality oriented FDP, so that we have provided lot of content in the LMS, and you can go through those content, and you will get a certificate once you complete the task and assignments there. Okay. Okay, this is the response. Uh, uh, teaching learning goals can be more effective. Participants can learn at their own pace and convenience. You can see around more than 3,000 faculty members are registered for this program. Most of them are, uh, you know, attending the recorded sections according to their convenience. Uh, improve self-learning skill, all of the above. Okay. So thank you for your response. Uh, we have one more slide. Uh, Okay, I think some of you already started giving your responses there. The same link you can use, uh, or you can go to mendy.com. The same link you can use, or you can go to mendy.com. Ten seconds more. This one response from uh, Dr. C. J. S. R. Madam. Yes, personally, it's very much helpful as I'm attending all the section late night as we have meetings and semester examination preparation process during the sessions. Okay. Thanks for your response. Yeah. So happy to see that uh, many of you have learned many things. Uh, little knowledge to moderate knowledge, then uh, moderate knowledge to expert in OB. Okay. Many of you are now experts. And the last slide, uh, I have one more.
I have a separate link for this one. Uh, it's posted in the chat box. Just go through that link. Uh, you can go to mendy.com and again, you can use uh, the code there. It is given on the top of this uh, screen. 4389-0404. You can give me your suggestions. Um, please give it in the Mentimeter itself so that it, 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 it will be recorded. You can go to the link. It's already available there. Give your suggestions also for a future improvement. Any suggestion from your part, you can give it regarding the timings or uh, again, any other concerns from your part. More practical sections. Practical sessions are there in the LMS. This is the way we are doing it because, you know, through the online sections, we are getting very less time and we have to cover a lot of things. Actually, you can consider this as a seven day full day program. So we are extending the time for uh, the LMS access. Uh, you have, I think uh, almost 20 or 25 days, you are getting the LMS up to 19th of November. Sections on mapping, okay. Actually, uh, some physical section should be there now. Once if you start implementing OB in a proper way, uh, uh, you need physical sections. Okay. Tedious and now you have my PC through for eight tools. Okay, thank you. Yeah, for some of the topics, you know, uh, offline sections are required, like for a mapping or for attainment calculation, but a lot of uh, confusions are there. I understand. Okay, thank you for your responses. Uh, now we will move to the Q and A section. Um, if you have any any clarifications or any doubts, I think some questions are there in the chat box. I will answer those questions. Um, How to create our own template? I have shown that uh, uh, create template. You can just go to create template, and the remaining things are there. Otherwise, there is a video available uh, along with the LMS. If the video is available, or uh, you can go to that video and uh, you can use it. Uh, so while sign up in question paper, it shows us currently we are introducing new users to our early access community. Yeah, actually, uh, only for the our faculty FDP participants, we are providing it currently. Maybe from next week, you will get it. All the paid parchments, you will get it. Uh, you will get a complimentary access. Uh, then creating your own templates. I already mentioned a video is available. OK. The LMS is accessible uh, up to number 19th. Okay, with uh, you are, you know, there are many faculty members who are requesting extension from the access. Uh, maximum you will get it up to 25th. Okay, up to 25th of November. LMS, OB manual is available in the LMS. Uh, if students are 
use question paper AI, then they will be knowing the probable questions. So what is the solution for? Uh, actually, uh, you will get a different uh, questions. Maybe uh, some of the questions will repeat. Naturally, it will be like that only. Even the students, if he, if they go through the previous question papers, they will get some questions that way only. So uh, there are some technical things we have already done. That area. Yeah, the, you will get uh, the, the details in your mail. Uh, how to sign up. Everything. To sign in. Sign up. Okay. I'll show how to sign up. Okay. I think the, the questions are over. And if you are given. Uh, Done the payment, definitely you can contact the numbers. They will provide you with the access. Okay. Uh, question paper dot a individually you can purchase from Nest V converts. Um, for time being, you will get uh, complimentary access. Uh, FDP certificate you can download. Uh, I think. Uh, um, I think will. Uh, yeah, yeah, explain I mean, it after I'm... the after the session. The reference section of the LMS, you will get uh, some reference material out there. No? Okay. Now to finish from MCQ for how long the assessments are open for attending. Definitely, it will be available up to November 25th. Uh, we expect that all of you are serious uh, participants. Uh, so um, just to go through the mcqs you can attend it more time uh, okay is there any test certificate sent definitely we can provide institutional assistance on lms if uh, yeah um, you can contact the the numbers uh, the, uh, yeah, available in the chat box we are supporting many education institutions in that case also not only that, we are providing training um, on how to use the model in a better way. Okay. I think almost all the questions are over. I'll just show you how to sign up once if you get the, the question paper a access. Uh, definitely you will get the access. Or the paid participants will get the access. So once if you uh, get the access, So this will be the login page. You will get it in your mail ID. Just go to question paper dot I. Then go to sign up. You have to enter your name, your mail ID, the mail ID you have provided at the time of registration. Uh, you will get the access, the details in your mail. So that the same mail ID you have to enter there and you can create your own password. Okay, then uh, click I agree, then click next so that you, the, uh, you will get an OTP in your email ID. 
once if you submit that uh, otp then you can go to that uh, uh, system, th you, uh this interface you get the interface here somebody has asked how to create your own template you can see you can create your own template like this create new you can give the details here and add section if you can have three sections you can add three sections and once you save it you will get it and currently you will not get any otp anything like that once if you get it in your mail then you will get it for otp you have to wait for some time otherwise you can try later maybe uh, some problem with your uh, mail server okay so if you have any any problems you know uh, you have the support numbers you can see the side there is support numbers there are three numbers available there you can call them you can just uh, whatsapp your message the support numbers are available uh, for any help okay definitely you'll get uh, questions from all domains yeah so i hope uh, we can uh, wind up the session uh, and in future if you want to contact us and i have already <clears throat> given my numbers my mail id and they have the the whatsapp numbers of uh, available in the chat and once again i will uh, give my number in the chat box this is my whatsapp number you can contact me send a message i will <clears throat> will contact you back okay 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 then thank you all for attending this seven day program it was a nice experience for all of us we, we are also learning many things from your, your uh, you are having some queries and we are also learning many things Thank you for your support. And in future, we will be definitely meeting again. Thank you once again. Over Thank you, Mendes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Mendes, sir. Thank you for the wonderful session. Now, I will take few, um, uh, I will inform you regarding the certificate. Please note, your certificate will be ready for download from the LMS by 15th November. Okay. Uh, please make sure you have completed the, the task activities and mcqs for to download uh, the certificate the certificate will not be sent to you by email okay uh, so you have to make sure that you complete all the activities and task and mcqs in the certificate for it to be downloaded and your lms will be accessible till the november 20 uh, 19th of november uh, it will be extended for those who require till 25th but the uh, actual access is only till the 19th of November. Please note, uh, the feedback form will also be there only in the LMS. You have to have access to the LMS to uh, fill in the feedback form. It will be available later in the night today by 9.30 also. Yeah, 9.30. It should be available in the LMS and you can fill the feedback form in the uh, from the LMS. Okay, so you need to have access to the LMS to do that. The, L, uh, the feedback form will not be sent to you by email. Okay, please note both the certificate and feedback form will not be sent to you by email. It will only be there in the LMS and you will have to have access to the LMS uh, for accessing these two. Please note, uh, I will just put uh, processing fee details, uh, processing details out here once again. Uh, make sure you, if you have made the payment for the what uh, the for, for the LMS uh, access and the certificate. Make sure you uh, send the uh, payment proof to the WhatsApp number that is stated out there. And if you need any support for the LMS, I will post the number again out here. Okay, I will tell you again. The certificate will be downloaded. Uh, will be available for download in the LMS by 15th of November. That's by next week only. Okay. Even if you complete the, all the all your uh, tasks and assignments, you'll have to wait till the 15th of November for the certificate to be downloaded. Yes, LMS link is sent to the email the, with the details. Okay. So once you have the details, it will be sent to your email. Okay, now we will move on to our last session. That will be the vote of thanks. The vote of thanks will be 
uh, delivered by Dr. Krishna Kumar KS, who's the IQAC coordinator. Dr. Krishna Kumar KS joined St. Albert's College Autonomous Anagulam as an assistant professor in 2013. He completed his pre-degree from Sacred Heart College, Revere, in 2001 and obtained his bachelor's degree in chemistry in 2004 from Maharashtra's College, called Ernakula. He obtained his master's degree in 2006 in organic chemistry from School of Chemical Sciences, Mahatma Gandhi University, Cotton with University first time. He began his research career in synthetic organic chemistry at the Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. In 2000, he was awarded the Junior Research Fellowship IRF in chemical sciences under the CSIR fellowship scheme. After his research experience from IIT in 2007, he joined the University of Claude Bernard, Lyon 1, France, from where he obtained his PhD in bio or organic chemistry, nucleoside chemistry, and peptide RNA conjugates under the supervision of Professor Peter Stravsky. He has published uh, 10 papers uh, in internationally reputed journals, 10 papers in conference pro proceedings, and a book chapter. He has a UGC funded research project on development of nucleoside based therapeutic compounds. He has presented research works in uh, various reputed institutions in India, France, Germany, Italy, Denmark, and UK. He has convened three international conferences and several seminars. Over to you, sir. I think uh, my vote of thanks will be much shorter than the introduction about me. Anyway, thank you very much for the nice introduction. Uh, uh, respected dignitaries, uh, uh, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Please proceed, sir. Yeah. Respected dignitaries and uh, resource persons and uh, my dear participants, uh, very good evening to all of you. So this is the final uh, session of our online FDP organized by uh, St. Albert's College uh, in association with Kerala State Higher Education Council. Uh, we know that the subjects that we handled uh, were very relevant as far as the present academic scenario is concerned. And we, we, we have around 3,200 participants who registered for this FDP, uh, which shows the grand success of this, this FDP. So first and foremost, I would like to uh, thank most respected uh, Professor Dr. Rajan Gurukal, the Vice Chairman, and uh, Professor Dr. Rajan Varghese, the Member Secretary, uh, for giving a chance to associate with Kerala State Higher Education Council uh, for conducting uh, such a relevant FDP. And now I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to all the distinguished resource persons, uh, Dr. Mendes Jacob, Dr. Sunil Job, Dr. Suresh Nambudiri, Dr. Anil Damanchandran, who generously shared uh, their knowledge, their insights, and their experiences. And I'm sure that uh, those sessions will help us uh, for the integration of OBE uh, and AI tools in our teaching. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for the uh, valuable sessions. And I also thank each and every member of uh, IPSR team for making this event a grand success. Uh, now I express my sincere gratitude to our college management, uh, principal, and all the uh, organizing members, especially the department members of Department of Computer Science for their uh, meticulous planning and uh, execution of this FTP. And finally, a, a very big thanks to all the participants uh, for your uh, what, uh, the commitment and dedication. And actually, uh, your active participation was the driving force uh, behind the success of uh, this FTP. And I hope that the knowledge and uh, uh, the skills that we have acquired during this FTP will uh, help us for sure. But actually, uh, just uh, a few hours before, I used this chat GPT in my life for the first time. Uh, I just gave a message, what of thanks for a seven day uh, OBE, uh, FDP, something like that. And it gave a fabulous two page uh, uh, what of thanks speech. But unfortunately, I don't uh, uh, have enough time to read it out completely. 
I know this is not an academic purpose, but but I am sure that we will see the very positive impact of this FDP in our classrooms and in our institution very soon. And uh, thank you very much uh, uh, again, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that word of thanks. Uh, we will take a few more questions as well. I will answer them. If uh, some of them, I will answer in the chat box itself. Uh, okay. This regarding the question paper dot AI. Please make sure that you will receive a, um, um, a sign up mailer from our side first. Okay. Then once you receive that, that you can sign up with that email address which with with which you registered. Then you do the sign up in the uh, site. Okay. Don't try to do it before that because once you, if you don't do that, you are not um, um, actually um, entered into the system. Okay. Once you are entered into the system, is when you will get the email to your mailbox. Then sign up into the system. All right. LMS details, once you um, um, uh, share the details with us for regarding the payment, will be sent, the details will be sent to your email. Yes. Yes, you need to complete the task, the MCQs and the activities there for you to receive your certificate. All right. Okay, I think it's getting repetitive. The certificate will be available to you by next week only. It will be available in the F, uh, the LMS. Okay, by next week, by fifteenth, it will be available in your LMS for download. Please come. The MCQs and activities are already there in the LMS. You need to complete that to receive the certificate. LMS will be extended to 25th only for on request. Otherwise, it will be ex only till the access will be only till the 19th, or only if you the extended. Only if it is on request, it will be extended 25th. You can request it to do the support number that I pasted regarding the LMS. You can just request it there. You need to complete all the tasks and MCQs. That will be a good opportunity for you to learn as well. So you can complete. There is task. There are some activities as well. Please complete them. There's a workshop activity. There's a lesson activity, and then some tasks where you need to approach some, um, um, fill in some uh, Excel sheets, and you need to upload them as well. You need to complete them as well. All right, everybody. I think uh, we have answered most of you. Yeah, almost all the questions that you posted. And some are just repetitive. Okay. Thank you again for attending this FTP. Thank you for being present with us for the seven days. We will see you again probably for another FTP. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this FTP. And uh, uh, yeah, please note there is an F, uh, feedback form in the LMS as well. Please uh, make sure you fill that up as well. Okay, that will be required for you to download the uh, certificate. Thank you again. Thank you once again. Uh, we will see you uh, maybe for another FTP.
yes, we will conclude for today and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you everybody and have a pleasant evening.